Located in the western part of China's capital Beijing, Shougang Industrial Park, an area formerly home to steel production, is now undergoing a major renovation to be transformed into a high-tech tourist spot and one of the venues for the upcoming 2022 Winter Olympics. Remnants of heavy industry still dominates the area's landscape, with cooling towers and former steel mills. And on the roads of Shougang Park, it's hard to miss a variety of self-driving vehicles, such as buses, robo-taxis, and delivery machines. One firm with a very noticeable presence on the streets of Shougang is Baidu. The company is becoming a giant in self-driving tech since the establishment of its autonomous driving unit, Apollo, in 2017. Baidu runs two different services in Shougang, a self-driving bus service named Apolong, and a paid, fully autonomous ride-hailing service called Apollo Go, which is the first commercial service of its kind in China. Until now, Baidu's self-driving cars have achieved over 9.9 million kilometers of level 4 autonomous driving, meaning they could operate in self-driving mode without requiring human interaction in most circumstances. The Croatia team went out to Shogung Park to take a look and test out Baidu's robo-taxis for ourselves. Once inside, it was very easy to spot one of the park's landmarks, the Shogang No. 3 Blast Furnace, an old structure that used to be used in steel making, now turned into a museum and tourist attraction. To order a Baidu robo-taxi, we had to download the Apollo Go smartphone app, available both on Android and iOS. The sign-up process requires users to upload some basic personal information and also a Chinese ID, which means that the service is currently limited to Chinese citizens. Once signed up, we were able to call a self-driving vehicle that would pick us up from one of the eight predetermined stops across the park. We chose to start from the San Gao Lu stop, right next to the Shougang No. 3 Blast Furnace. The vehicle that came to pick us up was a modified Hongqi EV, fitted with an assortment of components like LiDAR, cameras, GPS, and radar. To get inside the car, we had to scan a QR code on the side of the vehicle to verify our green health kit as part of the measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Currently, rides are limited to two passengers in the back seats, while there's a Baidu employee in the front passenger seat. He doesn't control the car, making him more of an onboard observer. However, in the case of emergencies, the car can be remotely accessed and controlled by a human operator over 5G. Once inside, passengers are instructed by the Baidu employee to put on seat belts. The touch screens are on the back of the front seat headrests, and users can hit a button to start the ride. Once in motion, the display shows the speed, ride duration, and distance covered. We chose to go from Sangalu to the furthest stop, Xiuqi North Station, in order to get the longest ride of roughly 1.1 kilometers. Because our route was almost a complete loop around Chunming Lake, the car mostly performed right turns, although it also steered left on a short, winding section of the route. The traffic in the area was light, but the vehicle did encounter other vehicles as well as a few pedestrians. The Apollo Go car dealt with such encounters the way a cautious human driver would, slowing down and yielding appropriately while going under 30 km per hour on average. The ride itself ended relatively quickly, lasting probably no longer than 5 minutes, and cost 30 RMB, or around $5, which is pricier than an on-demand DD Express ride, which starts at 13 RMB and adds roughly 4 RMB per kilometer. Although it's a commercial service, it feels more like a novel experience at the moment. Maybe because Baidu's robo-taxis only operate within the Shogang Industrial Park, or because the maximum distance traveled was limited to roughly one kilometer. The ride felt safe and comfortable, but that was helped by the fact that we were on a predetermined route. We didn't encounter much in terms of things you would typically find on a Beijing street outside of Shogang Park. Things like bicycles, electric scooters, buses, more people on the streets, or aggressive human drivers. Yet, this isn't stopping other visitors at Shogang Park from trying out the service. As for the Baidu Apolong self-driving buses, they were available to ride for free to the general public and could be boarded at various bus stops located within the park. Yet, filming was not allowed inside of these vehicles. Baidu Apollo isn't the only firm working toward robo-taxi services in China. Other notable names include Alibaba-backed AutoX, which has been testing its robo-taxis in Shenzhen and Shanghai, allowing the general public to book autonomous taxi rides on the public roads of these two cities. We Ride, which also operates a robo-taxi fleet in a test driving area in the Huangpu and Guangzhou Development District in Guangzhou, with services open to the public since 2019, 
Pony.ai, which has run self-driving tests in both China and the U.S., has also been using its vehicles to deliver products from online retailer Yami Buy to customers in Irvine, California. The company seeks to maximize fleet efficiency by combining transportation of both goods and people, according to the firm CEO James Pung. Ride-hailing giant Didi has also launched a pilot robo-taxi service available to the public in designated areas within Shanghai last year, and has also obtained open road testing licenses in several Chinese cities as well as in California. In January, the firm signed an agreement to invest in the research and development of smart internet connected vehicles in Guangzhou, which could open the way for a potential commercial deployment of its vehicles in the southern city. As for Baidu's robo-taxis, they are also available in Yidrong and Haidan districts in Beijing, as part of a trial service open to the public. Cars can be requested via the Apollo Go app, but compared to the vehicles operated in Shougang, a safety driver sits in the driver's seat, though with his hands off the wheel. Expanding commercial operations to other busier parts of the city is perhaps the real test for Apollo and other companies in the sector. And to do so, they must show that self-driving tech can deal with the demands of any type of driving situation, 